Hi folks, let's take this Mitutoyu Trimic apart. This is used for precision measurement of bores. Let's take a look at how it works. Then in Fusion 360, let's start designing the model, including the joints and the motion links to actually simulate the functionality and the mechanism. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So three main pieces to the body. We've got the cap with a threaded rod. That rod pushes down on a pl as a plunger, and when it does, there's a taper inside of here, and that taper pushes against these three expanding side guys, and that expands out equally and allows you to very precisely measure a bore. Pretty cool, right? Zero, zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So when I rotate this one turn, that's 25 thousandths of an inch. That means one inch divided by 25 thousandths is 40 TPI. So I updated the model from last week's Fusion Friday to include this threaded rod. I activated the cap. Take a look. You can hit the back button and move to the beginning and the bottom left of your screen. And you can hit play. This could be a really fun way to see how something was built. Sometimes I wish it was a little bit slower. Uh, the other way to do it would be just index one at a time. So I'll hit next. There we go. I create a sketch, which if I turn it on, you can see my sketch. Revolved it. Created another sketch too, which is the base of that shaft. Next, the guy extruded it out, added the thread. If I right click, edit, you can see quarter by 40 TPI. Added a little sphere at the very tip, as you can see right there. Chamfer. And then just to make it easier to see the rotation, we don't actually have a hex here, but it'll be easier to see when we've got the model working. We also updated the body, just so it looks a little bit more like this center section. So here's what I want to do. I want Fusion to see the joint relationship between these two, including the one rotation equals 25 thousandths of movement in Z. So I learned something, thanks to Xander from Autodesk, actually. We, I normally would do what's called grounding. So we need something locked in place here so it doesn't move around. In this case, I'm going to ground the body. Right click, ground. Except apparently that's not ideal. And look, I think you can probably still do it most of the time. But the better way for CAD etiquette is to create actually a rigid joint. Between what? Well, construct, assemble, joint, this guy, and then turn your origin on. If you pick the origin, there we go. So it does, it changes this orientation, which is, oops, rigid, which is fine, it's okay. Click okay. So that's apparently better, again, than, than right clicking and ground. Turn my cap on, it's out of place right now, it's okay. So activate the parent, assemble joint. This is going to be a cylindrical joint. Between what? I like to turn off, uh, alternate the visibility to make it easier to sh confirm what I'm picking. So I'll turn off the cap. I want to create a joint between this top center right here and then my second component I'll alternate here, I'll turn off the body, and I'll turn on the visibility of the cap. I want to pick the bottom center right here. So I'm going to hover my mouse here, hold the control key. That'll let me zoom in and click this center guy. Now let's turn the body back on. Ooh, I think we're backward. Animate. Yep, so just hit flip. Okay, so see that's kind of wrong. It's showing that the body is moving relative to the cap. I kind of want it the other way around, so let's fix it. Let's pick the cap first, and the body second. Flip, here we go. I like that better. Click OK. First thing I want to do, I don't want this to be able to move infinitely left or right. So right click on the joint we just made, the cylindrical, Edit Joint Limits. 
Now this is tripping me up. I'll come back to what I did wrong at the end of the video. Switch the motion to slide. Check minimum, check maximum. Minimum can be zero, say one here. So if I animate that, it's only going to go minimum of zero, which would be where those two coins that we selected would meet. Maximum would be one inch out. That's a little bit further than we need to go, maybe say 0.8 inches. Click OK. So now I've created limits, but I don't have that relationship yet of the, of the 40 threads per inch. To do that, assemble motion link, joint. So I need to pick the joint. In this case, it's the cylindrical. And the cylindrical does two things. It's both the motion and the rotation. So I'm able to do link with same joint. Normally for a motion link, you need two separate joints, like when you're doing a vice, say. But here I can do the link with same joint, slide Z. So 0.025 translates into a th one return, 360 degrees. We're done. Click OK. Take a look. As I rotate this, it's a little bit tricky to see, but if I can right click, edit feature, and animate, and you can see it's rotating, and that actually is correct. It's moving 25 thou with every rotation. Does somebody know? I wish there was a better way that I could use my mouse or keyboard to float, to turn this because it's so uh, fussy or particular about how you, where you grab it and you you can kind of turn it and then it and then it just kind of chokes on you. I'd love to see a chip or trick for that. A word of caution: what I did before, but practicing for this video that really threw me off, was on the on the cylinder joint, edit joint limits. Instead of, ro uh, instead of slide, I had started in rotate, thinking that that was the, the degrees, that's the, uh, how I wanted to limit the motion. And I said, no, 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 it's slide. So I went and I did the slide, not realizing I still had the rotation selected, and that froze the joint. It didn't work. So I hope you learned. I hope you enjoyed. Come back next week. I'm going to try to actually finish this off by showing, as we push the plunger down, how do we expand out these three sliders that actually measure the bore. Take care, folks. See you next week.